blessing that we now enjoy. It's the Lord's blessing that we now enjoy. Yes, Heavenly Father, touch and join us one more time, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray, amen. Good afternoon, it is Wednesday, November the 18th, the year of our Lord, 2020. We are still in the midst of this pandemic. We are still coming out of the throngs of a uh, turbulent election. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. President Trump has, I believe, 62 more days in office. We're asking you to pray for our country on a multiplicity of levels. Prayer is much, much needed today on a whole lot of levels. Um, we've been coming from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Please open your Bible. This is what I want you to do, two things. First of all, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let somebody know that you're listening to the program. And then the other thing is, we've been preaching out of the book of Acts for I don't know how long now. We're just in the ninth chapter. We have a long ways to go. Now, I, I, I kind of stumbled across a guy that was preaching on Acts, supposedly like I am, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And I, I purposely listened to him preach four sermons out of the book of Acts. And I won't say where it was, but he didn't preach, nowhere was the Holy Ghost in it. You can't come through the book of Acts. You can't stumble in the book of Acts. You can't fall into the book of Acts without coming across the Holy Ghost, the second, third person of the Godhead, the Ruach HaKodash. You need the Holy Ghost. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell some of your friends that are watching services on Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube about what we're doing in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. The ninth chapter, the ninth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. We are now the ninth chapter, verse 31 through 34. And what's so significant about the ninth chapter of the book of Acts is where Paul, excuse me, Shual, Saul, was converted. He was converted on the road to Damascus. And it was such a demonstrative um, uh, what he went through is that in verses 24 and in verse 29, he had came wanting to kill Christian, kill believers in Jesus at the beginning of the ninth chapter. He had the writ, he was going to go out and um, hurt people in church, uh, take people to prison, and beat them, do whatever he needed to do. But as the uh, chapter goes on, things change because by the time we get to the 24th verse, but their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then we go to verse 29. And he spoke boldly in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and disputed against the Hellenists. We talked about the Hellenists last week, but they attempted to kill him. So he went from trying to murder the church to being one of the ones to be murdered. He had reaped what he sown just that quick with it. Now, 
we're at verse 31. Then the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace when they were edified. Now that's a lot. The Bible says, God's word says, they had peace and were edified. We have to edify, the church has to edify our Lord and Savior. We have to have peace. No matter what we go through, we have to operate in peace. It's important to know that that's what we have to do. So when we, when we go say they, they had peace and were edified, no matter what you're going through in life, you can have peace. People can want to beat you up. People can want to talk about you. People may want to throw you in jail. So 
Jesus' name. No matter what man does, keep on saying and telling the world it's about Jesus. Wherever I go, I'm running to people with situations that are happening because of the COVID. And I just tell them, I don't preach a sermon to them. What I do, I just tell them about Jesus. And I'm going to pray for them. If they say, I'll accept that, I go ahead and pray. He's a 